After tackling the coronavirus, China is sending satellites into space. The pandemic, which has now taken almost 5 lakh lives worldwide, has not derailed China's space domination plans. And now China completed the deployment of its global navigation system yesterday, a network of 35 satellites that will now power China's own navigation system, one with a position accuracy of 10 cm. and it's the latest arm in china's bid to snoop on the world here's how sitting far away from a collapsed global health system these engineers oversaw a historic launch In less than 30 minutes after this rocket went to space, China declared mission accomplished. Now I declare that the launch mission of the latest BDS satellite this time has achieved a complete success. More than 100 countries are fighting the Wuhan coronavirus, but China is chasing space domination. The satellite joins 34 others to complete what China calls the Beidou navigation satellite system. Beidou is the Mandarin name for the Big Dipper constellation. China's global navigation system is now in its third version. It wants to stop depending on foreign GPS systems. Beidou is made for all purposes. from map-based navigation on smartphones for civilians to guiding the weapons of people's liberation army it was a moment of extreme humiliation that led to the development of beidou back in 1996 china lost its missiles fired across the taiwan strait it was a move to deter taiwan from moving towards independence but china had egg on its face when it lost track of two missiles Later the Chinese blamed their failure on a sudden disruption of GPS. China has spent 10 billion dollars on its global GPS network. Something that has been in the works since the late 1990s. Before Beidou, China was dependent on the American GPS system, even for its military. With the tensions between China and America escalating, the full deployment of Beidou was the need of the hour. In case of a military conflict with the United States, Beidou will keep the Chinese military online. The launch of the final satellite marks the completion of the global constellation deployment. As I mentioned before, it also marks the full completion of our country's three-step strategy for the navigation satellite system. In the meantime it is also of paramount significance as one of the key indicators showing our country has taken a step further towards becoming an aerospace power. Beidou opens more doors for Beijing. The new Chinese global navigation system will now become a part of China's push to expand its technological influence globally. There are only a few players in the global GPS game. All of these systems are in the hands of governments. Several countries use the American GPS right now. Russia has its own system called GLONASS. The Europeans have the Galileo system. India has its own regional system called the Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System or IRNSS. Similarly, Japan has the Quasi Zenith satellite system or QZSS. And now China is the new player in the global market. But don't expect Beijing to just give away they do. Last week, the Chinese state media described the navigation system as a gold key of your home that should only be kept in your own hands. Your report We are. Well, this one.
Now, Singapore is heading for elections in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic and President Halima Yaqub has dissolved the parliament on the advice of the Prime Minister. Now, Singaporeans will vote on the 10th of July to elect a new government to lead them out of the pandemic and the global economic fallout. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long is seeking a final fourth term in office. He decided to go ahead with the polls that opposition parties have described as opportunistic and unsafe. The tenure for Lee's government was set to end in January 2021, but he says COVID-19 may linger till next year as well. The Prime Minister wants to hold the elections early since the pandemic situation is still under control. The tiny city-state has recorded over 42,400 cases of coronavirus, which is more than the number of cases in countries like Kuwait, Japan and Afghanistan. However, just last week, Singapore lifted most of its restrictions. Curbs on socialising, shopping and dining have been eased after more than two months of the lockdown. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long is a scion of the city-state's founding family. His party, the People's Action Party, has never lost a general election. Lee says he wants a new mandate for his government to steer Singapore through the social and the economic impact of the pandemic. An election now, when things are relatively stable, will clear the decks and give the new government a fresh, full, five-year mandate. It can then focus on this national agenda and the difficult decisions it will have to make and to carry. The alternative is to wait out the COVID-19 pandemic. But we have no assurance that the pandemic will be over before this government's term must end next April. And that is why I have decided to hold the general election now. Critics have slammed the move. They say elections in times of a global pandemic will impact the smaller parties. No rallies will be allowed and the opportunity to connect with the voters will be limited. Candidates will largely depend on television broadcasts and live streaming to reach out to the masses. Health and safety concerns remain. Additional precautions will be taken to ensure voters are safe from COVID-19. Temperature screening and social distancing will also be maintained. Voters will have to wear gloves. There would be specific voting times for seniors as well. However, Singapore will not allow mail-in ballots. Now, Singapore hopes to learn from other nations as well, which have held elections in the times of the global pandemic. South Korea held its parliamentary elections in April, which saw a record turnout. Primary elections have been held in several U.S. states ahead of November presidential polls. While Serbia recently conducted Europe's first post-lockdown election,